There is a fight going on in Jefferson City between Missouri House Speaker Tim Jones uh, and Governor Jay Nixon, and they're asking the Attorney General Chris Coster to be uh, the, I guess, the referee as to what actually a bill says. Elizabeth Crisp from stltoday.com and the St. Louis Post-Dispatch has been following this story. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. <laughs> uh, fill us in. What, what's going on here? Give us the story. Well, this has been, you know, an ongoing fight. It's been the campaign of the summer. It's over the tax cut bill that the legislature passed this session. Um, it, Governor Nixon has been all across the state campaigning, you know, in, in favor of his veto of um, this legislation. The House Republicans are trying to figure out if they have the numbers. They're trying to see if they have enough enough votes to override Nixon. And um, it, the governor's been making a lot of claims about what the what the bill does, how it's going to impact the budget, if it's going to have an impact on prescription drug taxes. And so yesterday, um, House Speaker Tim Jones asked Attorney General Chris Coster to give a, a, a real legal opinion of what the bill actually does. Well, yeah, the governor, according to your story at um, stltoday.com, the governor mm-hmm. is saying that um, in this bill... It's going to raise taxes for up for up to the last three years. Well, it's no. What it does is it allows people. It's it, he's saying that if Congress passes the Marketplace Fairness Act, then um, it, that'll allow Missourians to claim um, tax returns for the past three years, which would have an impact on the budget and an unexpected impact on the budget if everyone starts filing. You know, saying I should have gotten more. Um, in my return, then all of a sudden you have, you know, a lot more coming out of the state revenues than were expected. Uh, I got you. Okay, so so right. there, there's an argument over what the bill actually says. Now, the, 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 you've also mentioned this, is that is there a tax increase for prescription drugs? There, well, what, it, what the – everyone kind of is still in disagreement over, over that provision also. The governor's legal team says that – there was a, a flaw in the bill, and what it does is it, it eliminates a tax credit for prescription drugs that the state has right now. So if you eliminate that, then prescription drug prices will go up. People will see a, a definite impact there. There's still some um, in, in the legislature who said that they don't read it that way. That was not their intention. And they say that, you know, if, if they do have the votes to override, then they'll, they'll come back in January. Um, and, you know, cl- close that loophole um, if, if they get a sense that that actually is what the bill does. But there are still so many questions about just the, the legalese of the, the legislation. And so when, when Tim Jones asked Attorney General Chris Coster to wade in, is Coster going to do anything, say anything? No, um, the Attorney General's office isn't saying much. They, you know, told me yesterday that they did. They got the formal request. You know, the statute that the House Speaker is using to say that, you know, he deserves a legal con- opinion from the Attorney General, it's pretty vague. It doesn't it doesn't appear to lay out any timeline, which, you know, they're on a pretty tight timeline if they're trying to use this in their override fight because September 11th is the veto session. It doesn't appear to give him any sort of time frame to give this opinion. And also, you know, reading it, there there could be some question as to whether it even – this type of question is even required of him because they, the statute actually says they, that um, the House Speaker can ask for a legal opinion for um, – on official duties – and so it seems like there could be some room for the attorney general to say this isn't, you know, the House Speaker's official duties to get a legal opinion on legislation. You know, we, we pending legislation, we have to see, you know, if it's passed and all of that. So, so there is some question whether he's going to he's going to actually. It's it's a it's a it's a gr- it. yeah. it's a great point <laughs> you, you you bring up Elizabeth Crisp from stltoday.com in that. I have never heard of a House majority leader or anybody in the Senate asking the attorney general for a clarification on on legislation they're working on. Right. Right. And that's that's the big question. And, you know, um, the attorney general, uh, we all know he was, you know, I in a run for governor coming up. He's been one of the one of the few people who's not really weighed in on this tax cut debate. 
um, the other um, have said that, you know, governor in this cluster has been a little bit, you know, kind of staying on the fringe of it. And so um, I, I kind of get the sense that this may have been um, the House Speaker's attempt to try to get him to weigh in on it in right. some way, to try to kind of push the issue, um, if nothing else, be able to say he won't, you know, give give a, a, take sides on this. But it is interesting to see a Republican House Speaker turning to a Democrat Attorney General in a fight with a Democrat governor. Right, try, trying to embarrass uh, Attorney General right. Chris Coster or trying to embarrass the governor. Uh, then there's all sorts of speculation and rumors that Tim Jones is, is already looking at uh, his attorney general race right. coming up here in the future. So all of that's uh, kind of interesting. September 11th is the veto session. Do we know if they have enough votes to override the veto? Um, the House Republicans are supposed to be meeting in St. Louis today and tomorrow. Um, and that's when they're going to really be, you know, getting down to the number crunching to try to see if they do have the votes. You know, we've already seen... Several Republicans kind of backing away. You know, they're not as they're not as strong in their opinions as we even saw in the session. A lot of it is because of these questions that the governor has raised, and um, you know, there there have been several Republican House members who told me that they're just getting so many calls from people who don't support it because the governor is able to um, bring up these points, like it's going to raise your prescription drug you know, prices, which is what he's been traveling across the state telling people. Yeah. And so um, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see whether whether they can get the numbers there. And you'll be counting votes right along with the rest yeah. of us. Elizabeth Chris yeah. <laughs> from stltoday.com. Thanks for checking in, and we'll talk to you down the road. Great work, as always. Yep. Thanks. You got it. Elizabeth Crisp uh, here. And um, Tim Jones doesn't know what the legislation says. Why doesn't he just ask one of the lobbyists? That's what he does. <laughs> What are you asking Castor for? He asked the lobbyists. What's going on? He's the House majority. He should know this. He wrote a letter to his constituents saying, what, you, what? The lobbyists didn't tell me how to vote on that. You want to know what it says, Speaker Tim Jones? Ask the lobbyist. How hard is it?